This is the weight box on the back of the Kubota. The weights don't fit in it right. I have to use ratchet straps to hold them in place. This kind of just has been just something put together because I needed some weight on the back of the Kubota so I could actually lift some logs and other things with the bucket on the front without having the back tires come off the ground. I'm thinking that somewhere the weight, each weight's about 150 pounds, if not a little bit more. So I'm gonna have to set up my engine crane. A couple of different problems with this weight box is it has no feet. So when I drop it off the three point hitch, I have to use cribbing and other things to keep it so it'll stand up straight, not fall over and dump the weights off. And it makes it almost impossible then once it's fallen over to get it back on the three point hitch. My father and uncle will actually put it together and with their welding skills and other stuff like that, fabrication stuff, it has quite a few problems and mistakes in it of steel overlapped and then welded, which means of course the two pieces of steel that are just flat against each other are gonna rot and rust up even faster. So I've gotta get rid of, I've already gotten rid of a bunch of joints like that. The piece up here was flat down against here and was rotting the corner and it was too low for the upper point on the three point hitch. So I moved that up and around. There's this big gap over here. On the other side, the weights are tied up against the side. I don't know why my father welded it so Put it together so wide either he just couldn't cut the steel or didn't have didn't have some ability to cut the steel i have my old power hacksaw on my good with my oxyacetylene torch so i'm um, the whole plan here is to rework the weight box so it fits the weights i don't need the ratchet straps to hold the weights in place also in this i have picked up Also, part of this is going to be that this weight box is partially going to become a base for my new mechanical winch that um, I, I have. Somewhere my father found a, a 20,000 pound, I think it's a uh, anchor chain winch that's made more for a boat than anything else, but it's rated at 20,000 pounds. Some people have reached out to me that had like 15 trees taken down on their property and they're looking for someone to take the wood as firewood or just use and stuff like that. I think I may have found myself a mill for my logs. I don't know. I have to reach out to the person yet to see what sort of prices they're looking for to, to mill, mill my wood, mill the logs that I have. And to get, because the way their property is, the logs are on a very steep bank, which is so steep, I really don't want to even drive the Kubota down the bank and then try to drag a log the size that some of them are up that bank with it being so steep. I don't think the Kubota, even with the partial ag tires, could do it. So we're going to have some time lapse, some other things. Uh, this will probably be uh, a multi-part video and I hope you enjoy. I've collected all the pieces together here in one spot to get my powered winch idea on the move. The winch is a Therm Model 492 with what the directions say on an empty drum is a 10,000 pound capacity. I believe it's supposed to be like an uh, anchor winch off a boat that the drum was made more for chain than cable. The inner diameter on the, the, the minimum diameter on the drum is kind of small for the size of the cable I want to use, so I'm trying to design a bracket or something to go inside the drum here that will actually make the diameter larger. Yes, I know it will reduce some of the capacity pulling of the winch. I just don't want the cable that I want to get it for its size to go around such the smaller you bring, the smaller diameter you bring the cable around, it starts to damage and twist up the cable especially if you pull it out with no load on it, it twirls, it curls up like some sort of curly cue and makes it more difficult to work with. After I get some cleanup done on, on this, I have some other problems with how figuring out how to, how to power it. 
There's a gear that slides on a shaft that has nothing but a stub left to it due to the fact that my father had welded a socket on this to make it because I think it was a handle was so poorly welded on to this gear that it fell off and my father wanted to power it well, I had like a three quarter square drive of some sorts. It didn't work out so I lathe and cut, I cut ground and then used the lathe to get the rest of the socket that he had put on here. So I have to figure out some sort of pulley or something to go on the drive gear. I'll show you the other side of the winch here, hopefully in the next part of this video. The engine here is a six and a half horse single cylinder I bought quite a few years ago. The gas tank is missing because it became rusty. I thought I drained enough gasoline out of it to prevent it from rusting. I didn't, so it's become, it. the whole tank, the inside of it, became nothing but just full of rust, where it just cleaning it up was just essentially impossible. I have a design I am perfecting at the moment for a square gas tank that I'm going to uh, bend out of a piece of, uh, I believe it's 12 gauge, um, 12 or 14 gauge steel that will bolt on where the original gas tank went that and um, solder all the joints together back kind of back in the day when they actually taught metal working in high school or grade school and use some of those skills from not long ago in making the gas tank. This lovely little thing here is a, a four-speed transmission off part of my a accessory for my milling machine. What comes out here is a clutch to drive accessories on a lawnmower. I have one part that spins and the two here, the red part sits on, 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 a, on a bearing on the shaft so it just turns. There's another bearing out here on the end where you are able, this is able to slide as you can see to go up against the friction material and the harder you press the more your clutch engages. So the idea is, is to have the motor drive the outside of my clutch here if I want to engage power to the winch. I choose the appropriate gear from low gear to overdrive and I'm going to have to make some sort of handle that comes off the part uh, comes up to uh, be able to push on so the clutch engages. I have just some very basic parts here of the outer part, the inner, the inner clutch disc, and the sleeve that they ride on and I need to weld the bush the, the washer on the sleeve here so that the clutch disc can bolt up to this also and this has a square key I don't have a lot of thickness on this I looked into getting a, a brooch because I'd like to get into some brooch work the problem is I found that no matter where I looked to find any type of broaching equipment, it was out of my price range. A quarter inch square, uh, six inch long brooch was like $90. So that is certainly out of my price range for a job like this. I may see if I can, depending on the hardness of this shaft, go over to a roll pin instead of a square key, hopefully not damaging uh, the square key on this shaft too much and getting a big enough notch into this bushing that the clutch will ride on to and, and, and have it actually with set screws and everything so it won't spin on the shaft and I will be able to hold the two in place the way I would like them held in place. Next up um, is the idea of getting everybody's rotation in the right direction. There is a label on the winch that suggests that it should turn for wind up in a certain direction. I'd like to keep that and working on uh, getting the 
drum size different. Once I get the engine running, we'll get you some video of making the gas tank and getting the engine running. The old gearbox here is in pretty good shape. I just have one gear that has two chipped teeth, which is fine with me. That'll work out just fine. It's not in, in low gear, it's um, in third gear, which I don't know because third gear is one to one and fourth is an overdrive gear. We'll see if any of those are used. I'm trying to keep figure out the appropriate RPM here. I don't want to overspin the winch because it doesn't have roller bearings. It just has bronze sleeves. Those are made for lower speed. Which I, if I keep if I um, overspin them without uh, a lot of lubrication, I don't want to burn burn up a bronze bushing. The engine is rated to do like 3,500 RPM, and I'm trying to get things geared down here the best I can and how to go between the pulley that used to uh, have a uh, two inch wide leather flop belt on it to drive part of my uh, milling machine that of course is from the turn of, not the 2000s, the previous century, that when those belt type belts were quite popular, uh, figure out how to get and what to do about getting the output of the transmission to appropriately drive the winch here at a decent RPM. I've spun the winch around here so you can see how the drive gear sets on the one shaft that also goes through the drum and this, this does have a bronze bushing on the inside and slides on. It's the gear, the two gears are set at five, five to one and this can also be come up here. So since I have two, two gears both set at five to one, out here we have 25 to one because five times five is 25 the last time I checked. Out here I have a direct drive to the counter shaft on the winch which gives me a straight five to one. I'm not sure about powering either one. I may make a very simple one of these that only has like three or four slots in it where it slides in and I can go to hand power on, on only five to one and drive things much, much faster and stay out here for powered stuff at 25 to 1 I have a brake which also the other thing is too is here where it sets into the two the, the, the between the two gears there's a little wedge that sets into the teeth as a lock which is really nice it will prevent that's why I want to make sure that the cable goes out in the correct direction so that if I have to do lock it in place under tension I have my lock which is hidden behind here uh, on the gear to lock my lock my winch in in place for other necessary adjustments and things while operating this piece of equipment that I am creating. All right, the next um, next on the list is of course is to finish the clutch assembly. Then I got to figure out. Um, which direction everything everybody's got to be mounted to keep things to get things turning in the correct direction so when I do engage my clutch things wind in the correct direction and We'll uh, see you in the next part